In this hand, I have a double Pitson. As you can see, there's actually three different tag-ins. And on this hand over here, I have an improved clinch. Now I've actually tied these together and I'm gonna pull them apart with this 12 pound test. As you can see, the double Pitson comes back. Actually, there's, there's line completely tied on. There's not even line over here on the improved clinch. Again, over here, the double Pitson. Over here now, we have a Palomar knot. Same exact thing. You can see the double Pitson still has the line attached where the Palomar knot broke at the knot. One more time, double Pitson. Over here, we have the San Diego jam knot. Pull these apart. Same exact thing. As you can see, the line is completely attached over here, not at all over here. When I first started bass fishing, I always used the improved clinch knot. And then years later, actually my uncle, who was a big tournament fisherman, showed me what was the best bass fishing knot ever, which was the Palomar knot. And I used the Palomar knot for a number of different years. Then I kind of switched over to the San Diego jam knot and then back over to the Palomar knot. But one thing that I noticed using other knots is that throughout the year, just a few times of the year, I would set the hook on a fish and my line would snap at the knot. Or I would be using really light line and I would be casting baits like a spy bait or a tube jig and that line would snap and my lure would just go flying. And for a while I thought maybe it was just me not knowing how to tie the Palomar knot correctly. I looked it up so many different times from different anglers showing you exactly how to tie it and I knew that I was tying it the right way. And then years later I was fishing a Bassmaster Open event on the James River when this happened. That fish right there was like a seven or eight pounder. It would have made a huge difference in that tournament and it would have got me a check for over 3000 bucks. I remember checking the line when this happened and realizing that it had broke at the knot again. Now, obviously, as you can see, I set the hook pretty hard. I always have, and a lot of you guys are gonna argue with me that you don't need to set the hook that hard, and that's fine. But regardless of how hard you set the hook, I really felt that there had to be a better knot out there, and that is when I stumbled across the double Pitson. Literally the moment that I started tying the double pits in, I completely eliminated those few times of the year where I would set the hook and break off a fish or go to cast the lure and break that lure off. Now the actual reason why this knot is so strong is actually because it's not a knot, it's actually a cinch. So the more that you pull on the main line, the tighter this cinch gets and it doesn't overlap itself where it can cut into itself. Now, every time that I tie this knot on video and post it on YouTube, I get several comments of guys asking me, what is that knot and how do you tie it? So today I'm gonna show you exactly how to tie the double Pitson. Now in this hand right here, I have a good old spinner bait. And in this hand right here, I have 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Now you're going to start this knot by doubling it and passing it through the eye of the lure or the hook that you are tying on. This is the same way that you start a Palomar knot. Now I'm actually going to take the loop and I'm going to lay this loop on top of my finger like this and close my thumb down on my pointer finger, which creates another loop right here. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take this loop and go around the loop we just created three times. Now we've actually created two different loops now. We have a loop on the top and a loop on the bottom. And I'm going to take the loop that I've been tying this knot with and pass it through that very top loop just like that. Now after that, I actually like to wet my knot and then I'm gonna pull kind of my main line and the loop at the same time to almost tighten down the knot before it even gets to the eye of the hook. As you can see, it doesn't look perfect, but then I'm going to draw it in all the way to the eye and then pull it the rest of the way with the main line and one of my tag ends. What you will be left with on your lure is a tag end as well as a loop. And I'm going to take my pair of scissors and cut that about an eighth of an inch above the eye of my hook and you have completed the double pitson. So this knot actually has three different tag ends when it is done and I'm telling you what, that is the strongest knot that you will ever tie. Now, if you're tying this knot on a bare hook like I have right here, which is a straight shank flipping hook, 
here is a little tip. When you go to actually swing this bait around, because the hook doesn't have a lot of weight, it can be very difficult. So all I do is take a little trusty pair of scissors that I always have on my boat and put it on the hook, and then I can easily swing that line around to be able to finish my knot. It's really that simple. Now, if you tie that double pits in and you are still breaking off, you are either using undersized line, old line, line that's not high quality, or maybe too stiff of a fishing rod. And speaking of fishing rods, right now at Sportsman's Outfitters, if you buy one Arc Lancer Pro Series rod, you can get the second one for just $19. That's a $100 rod for just $19. And I wanna give them a big shout out because they are the sponsor of this video. So if you wanna check out that deal, click right here. If you wanna check out another video about knots, you can click this video right here. Comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.